totally cool. You can do what you can say whatever you want to say. I'm a marine five days a week. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. From nine to five. All right. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I'm Clayton Filipovich, and I'm here with. I'm Tyler Lee Main. And. Guess like. And so this is our first episode of our podcast. We don't know the name right now, but we're going to get that soon. Uh, real quick, we're going to go around the table and tell you a little bit about ourselves. Um, most of you guys know me because I'm probably posting this on my channel right now. Uh, I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. I got out and worked briefly at the Tribal Channel. Then I taught at the Defense Information School for a little bit. And now I work for the Air Force doing social media for Airman Magazine, which you should totally follow on Facebook and help me earn my paycheck. Shameless plug. Yeah, Shameless plug. <laughs> just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> so next, I'm going to throw it over to Tyler. Uh, like I said, I'm Tyler Lee Main. Uh, I was born in California, but I've lived in the country in Northwest Arkansas forever. I'm a Marine Corps photojournalist and public, affair, public affairs practitioner. My specialties are photography, social media. I've been to six countries, mostly in Asia. Um, my wife, Lauren, and I have a one-and-a-half-year-old son named Calvin. He's uh, the littlest tornado. She says my hobby is hobbies, so I guess that means I do um, a lot of things at once. I like to play sports. I'm into fitness, video games, percussion, Subarus, and custom PCs. Cool. cool. That's hard to follow. That is hard to follow. Over to yeah, Light. You should, you should have done me first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my name is Gus Light. Uh, I'm a videographer in the Marine Corps, so I got, got some video skills under my belt. Uh, lived in Okinawa, Japan for two years. Other than that, that's pretty much all I got. Well, <laughs> boo, Gus. Boo. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's much more talented than he's letting on. So anyway, oh, it's kind of cool you. right now that we have three Marines at the table, uh, combat camera, public affairs, able to talk about their experiences. But uh, the other cool aspect of this channel right now, of this podcast, is we're going to just talk about stuff we do outside of work because it's not all about the Marine Corps. Yeah, Marines are people too. Marines are people too. Yes, believe it or not. So we kind of came with uh, a couple of topics each to talk about. We're going to start off with... Tyler Lee Main's topic. What do you what do you got for us, Tyler? Um, so I've been normally I play a lot of video games, but um, I don't I don't play a lot of single player games. My video game experience is solely for like social interaction with people that um, I've lost connection with because uh, the Marine Corps the Marine Corps uh, stole me from everything Marine that Corps I love. Yeah, Just stole me right out of my bed and <laughs> put me into a life of servitude. <laughs> But uh, I recently got into this game called Ark, and I know you've heard of Ark, Clayton. I have heard but, of Ark. Uh, I guess you're not into Ark. I think yet. I might have seen a video. Like I watched this. There's like this video. The tagline was like the most vile betrayal of all oh time. Oh my god. Okay, so we're gonna. Was that it? That was that the game? Yes. Okay. Yes, I saw, I've game. seen it. I didn't really watch the whole video. I right. saw it looked like a Minecraft survival yep. kind of rust. So this yeah, game. that's what piqued my interest. So tell okay. So tell okay, us about so Ark. I would say that it's a it's a good mix between um, Skyrim and Minecraft, mm -hmm. in that uh, it's very open world. You can do whatever you want. There's really no storyline. It's just more about surviving and like making the conditions the best for your tribe. Um, so I've been playing this game for a while. Actually, I started on PC. I just moved over to Xbox because I have a few friends on there that wanted to join in. And uh, my buddy uh, Christian Thompson, who is a um, radio technician over in Camp Pendleton also in the Marine Corps. Um, he and I were playing on PC. We decided we want a few more people to join because we just couldn't do, we couldn't make our like castle big enough, like just with the two of us, you know, we couldn't harvest all of our crops. I'm already getting like super nerdy with this. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. What a cold blooded killer. So, I mean, yeah, as you can, I mean, just with the few, uh, the, the brief little explanation I'm giving, you can tell it's like pretty deep, but um, basically. So it's, like, it's like one of those games where it sounds nerdy as shit from the outside, but when you get into it, it's like, okay, you can't stop. Yeah, I mean, okay, so I'm not looking forward to work tomorrow because I'm very upset about the hours that I'll be devoting to supporting my family and not my fake tribe on exactly. art, if exactly. that makes sense. Right. So the video that Gus was talking about, I don't know if you've have you seen it that we were talking about? No. Okay, so the premise is uh, in the game, you start off as a, re as a, new, as a new spawn, is what mm -hmm. they refer to it as, and you're completely naked and you're holding a rock, is what I got out of it. So the guy is actually an experienced player, but uh, he switches to completely naked. He yeah, the rocks in his arm. The rocks in his arm. Yeah, it's like embedded. Yes, yes. And then he like walks up to these like little kids' hut, and like these two little kids are in a hut, and 
they're like, hey, man, uh, go away. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes where this is going. So he's like, go away, man. So the dude's like, oh, but I need help. I'm a new spawn. And they're like, okay. So he lures these little kids. Yes, these little kids out of the hut. <laughs> he, he pulls out an AK-47 and just kind of like lights them up. So. The I thought the the game that that was really funny. My first impressions of the game. I haven't played it, but I saw yeah. that video on Facebook. It looked really cool, so I'll probably end up getting it. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. You wake up naked on the beach, and uh, you're usually freezing and starving. And like your first mission is to uh, you know go gather some berries, some type of food, uh, kind of steer clear of anything that's going to kill you, um, and then like make as many tools as you can. Uh, usually in the beginning, you can make like a pickaxe, which gets you is able to get you a few um, different. Um, ingredients or uh, materials to survive a little bit longer but I would say between levels 1 and 10 and this is when like all four of my friends just started on Xbox it was a constant um, what would you say like uh, like just repeat of dying and then trying to find each other again because the map is huge well, that's what anything <laughs> is. so like yeah we would just die and they'd be like alright where are you now I'm by the red tower like I'm all the way by the blue one in the snow area and it's like <laughs> god dang it man I gotta <laughs> run for 45 minutes and then like you'll run like 100 yards and something will eat you and then you know just rinse and repeat until no, you get enough what, levels okay so before we get too far down this uh, hole here <clears throat> my gamer tag is Mr. MR space F I L P O, Mr. Philpo. That'll be in the description below. Your gamer tag, Tyler, is. The main event, D U H space M A I N space E V E N T. And Gus, do you play Xbox? Uh, I got a PS4. So, what's your. Uh, I know. I, I know. I used to play PlayStation 3, and I was like hardcore about it. Uh, and then I switched to Xbox One, and I just. I liked it better. But your. So, your PlayStation uh, name is. Commander Johan. Commander, it's Commander Johan. underscore J O H A N. Cool. Nice. And we'll put that in the description below. So add us up if you guys want to, if you're on Xbox One, if you're on uh, PlayStation Four. Solid collection of gamer tags. <laughs> Very say. solid. Very solid. My my old Xbox One is Gus Bus One One Three Eight. If I get ever get an Xbox One, I'll probably resurrect it. Right. Yeah. Right. So, right. Gus right. Nice. So so we're moving over to Gus real quick. Gus, what was your topic that you brought? Uh, I was gonna, I wanted to talk about just really poor business practices of like larger game producers. Okay. Just because the whole I was. For some reason, I thought about the new Star Wars Battlefront, and it's sixty dollars for the game, which you pay sixty dollars for any game. But it's like, I guess you could say it's only half a game, and then there is pretty much another separate game which is coming out in four DLC packs, right. which it's equating to like pretty much equal of the game. It's like sixteen more maps, and the original game had sixteen maps, I think. Something along these lines. My numbers are probably off, but it's like sixteen new maps, new heroes, and it's all stuff that, in my opinion, should have just been included with the game. Right. Because the game, like, it looks beautiful. Like, I've never seen a better console game. And it definitely feels like Star Wars. Except the soundtrack, but that's, like, a different uh, subject. But it's $60 for the game, and then another 50 for the DLC pack. That's, like, 120 bucks. Like, no, that's ridiculous. So, I'm, it's kind of the equivalent of, like, buying a new car. And it's like, yo, that's a sweet car. That's here's gonna, the engine. Yeah, like, here's the engine <laughs> sold separately. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, I totally hear that because, like, I am personally am, like, one of the biggest Call of Duty fans. Like, I mean, that was my childhood. Like, some of my good friends in, in, in life came from like, <laughs> PlayStation 3, uh, Xbox 360, Call of Duty. And the thing that I've always hated about Call of Duty is you buy the game for 60 or $80 or $100 when it first comes out. And then... You're that paying. legendary edition exactly. with, the, with the NVGs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's just like Jesus Christ, man! Like, give me something to work with here. Like, why? Why not just tell me that? It almost feels like a scam. It almost feels like one of those uh, car salesmen around like a Marine Corps base, where like <laughs> I'm getting roped in with like 25 percent interest on a game because you know I'm gonna buy it because I'm a fool. You, yeah, you gotta get the DLC. You have honestly, to. honestly, never thought the Call of Duty DLC was that bad in terms of like business practice it's like new maps uh -huh. like because i'm like because battlefront is like when you if you were to play battlefront if i were to give it to you you would play and be like wow that's a lot of fun but there's a lot missing i feel like there could be so much more and that's coming in the dlc as opposed to call of duty which i think pretty much every every call of duty i've ever bought which is all of them unfortunately yeah. because i just buy it every year because right. i'm a shameless consumer exactly. but every call of duty i've ever bought 
always has like a really good on disc package because it usually has three different game modes especially now because like it pretty much is required to have a zombies mode a multiplayer mode and a campaign that's mm -hmm. three different game modes you can play with your friends right so uh, honestly i bought it over christmas me and my buddy were like oh we need a game to play together you can sink and, a ton of hours yeah. into those game modes individually exactly too. Mm -hmm. yeah Oh, and no. I, th I yeah. think that, like, I think Call of Duty, like, as much as people crap on it, I think it's a pretty good value when you spend sixty dollars on a brand new game, and you have, and as long as your friends buy, it, like, you and your friends can just like yeah, no, play I, that and game. And Call of Duty has always been the game to me that <clears throat> I can just I can... see our sub like our subscriber and viewer weight just like yes, yeah. it's because we're just, like, they're liking no, we Call of Duty. We'll talk of something other than <laughs> we're gonna other talk than about games. our love for Nickelback right yes. after this. <laughs> right. Look at this photograph. <laughs> <laughs> while playing Call of Duty. <laughs> yes, while playing Call of Duty. We should do a Let's Play. Well, you know what? I, I, this is, I don't want to go on too many tangents, but I, was, uh, I went to get Subway for you guys today, and as I was driving back, uh, with the arms wide open, yeah. came on. Like, Isn't that Creed? That was the yeah, Creed yeah, Nickelback. Creed. Okay. Yeah. Well, fuck Creed. So anyway, uh, <laughs> back to what we're, So Call of Duty, I've sunk a lot of hours into that game. Like Call of Duty 4 came out when I was in seventh grade, and I played that game so much. I think when everything was all said and done, I had 104 days of playing time. That does not count. I'm, I'm just going to leave. I mean, <laughs> 104 days straight. So if you lined up all the days I was actually in the game, 104 days. I was also grossed. That's like a year, man. Yeah. That's like a year. Yeah. Fool. Wait. That's how much I played that game. And that's not counting Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Call of Duty Black Ops, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. All that shit, man. Like, I played so much. I love Call of Duty. This is the first game, uh, the, the most recent one that I haven't bought because I'm waiting for them to stop doing futuristic. Yeah, games. I'm not a huge fan. It's honestly the new one. I, I got it, and I've been sinking quite a few hours into the multiplayer myself, like, mainly because mainly I do good in it. Like, if I, like, I didn't do good in Modern Warfare 2, so I didn't play online. But, and then Black Ops was, like, my favorite Call of Duty. That was the one, like, all my friends, we all played like back when I was still in high school and like actually had friends. So like we would all just get online, we'd play and we'd have like a great time. And I would actually do good in those games for the most part. And now I'm playing Black Ops 3 and I'm doing good. Like a few days ago, I went like 24 and 8. Yeah. What's the like best shit game on the enemy team. Okay, so we're going to go around the table. What's the best game kill death ratio wise you've ever had in a Call of Duty? I, I wouldn't remember. Probably that <laughs> game. Man, yeah, it's like nice. it's like a monument. Like my family celebrates the day I went, like, 112 and one on shipment in Call of Duty Four. Wow, yeah. 112 and one. 112 and one, man. Domination, Call of Duty Four, three times frag, MP5. I do. I remember it like back in my head. <laughs> back in like, it was like this is it's a bigger holiday than Christmas. So you have a tattoo. Christmas takes a back seat. You have a tattoo of like yeah. all the friends you lost it's a that day. It's a trend, yeah. For those of you thinking there's no possible way, <laughs> I have seen this man in action, and it is a very real possibility that this is a. I swear, I would not lie to you. Yeah, I'm not happened. a religious man, but I'll go to fisticuffs over this. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so when Modern Warfare Three came out, I was actually a lance corporal, and we. I remember. I think you took leave with us, didn't you? When yes. Modern Warfare, so we took like. Wait, it was Modern Warfare what? Three. Yeah, yeah, that was the last one I got into. Yeah. I was with you. Yeah, and we took leave. I mean, we took some, I, mean, I think I took like a week, maybe full of leave, uh, and I played nonstop. I only stopped to poop, to eat and drink as necessary, to, to, you know, to sustain life, and <laughs> I, I, I sometimes went outside when my vitamin D levels were like plumbing, so... <laughs> It was it was like an RPG, like yeah. you just had like status bars, exactly. And you could it was like The Sims, and, and like I, yep. most no. of them you could just do without. Exactly. But. And I was able to get to rank twenty five in the world, at least for team deathmatch. That's that's a feat I'm still skeptical about. No, for the, you, I think you, I you swear by it. You've told me that before, yes. but I, I'm First still skeptical. Stage, like my my goal was because of the last time I was like high, that high ranked in Call of Duty, I was like seventh grade, and that's when you have like all the time in the world. And no interest in girls. And it's like, <laughs> I'm just gonna play all the time. So I remember I'd always get on and check your rank and like see <laughs> where you were at. Yeah. While I was trying to like get a even KD myself, you know that would have been an accomplishment for me. You were. Yeah. So you anyway, running the world. I'm a huge Call of Duty fan. So that actually brings up a pretty good topic that I actually have some like branching off games to talk about. Uh, best multiplayer experience. Oh man! You and, know what? Honest to God, before Call of Duty, you these guys could not get me off of it. Especially Tyler and Jimmy Shea could not get me off Call of Duty. I think, in my personal opinion, the best multiplayer experience, 
hands down, is Rainbow Six Vegas 2? Is that, what, is that what it's going by now? Is it Rainbow? It's Siege. It's Siege, right? The one that just came the out? The one that just came out. Yeah, Rainbow Six. Oh, so it's, oh, it's a new, oh, new yeah. addition to the, it is to the lineage of fantastic. great Clayton yeah. Filipovich gaming moments. It is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't say enough about it. Now, Tyler is the one that introduced me to it. Tell us a little bit about it, Tyler. Uh, so, Marshall, a buddy of mine, Marshall and Christian, we all got the, uh, the beta. Mm-hmm. And then there was only a few modes and a few maps, but... Um, we played it, and this is the thing, is like, this is a really underrated game, I think. Uh, there wasn't a lot of buzz about it, and uh, I don't think a lot of people picked it up initially, but we played the beta, and although they had some server issues, like the, the depth of... Okay, so the, the objective is pretty simple. Is There's a team outside a building, there's a team inside a building. And the team outside the building has to break in and either secure a bomb or a hostage, um, obviously either trying to kill the other team or taking the hostage out of the building. Um, and that's pretty much the objective of every single game that you're going to play. Like, that's the only thing you do. Um, which sounds like, I guess, kind of one-faceted, but it's so mm-hmm. deep. Like, yeah. the way that you can, like, breach rooms, like, all of the abilities that you can use. Um, it's ve- it's a very distilled shooter um, game because there's not a whole lot of, like, add-ons and perks and this and that that you're adding on to your player. you got your gun. you got, like, whatever class you are. He can do. He can break down doors this way or he has this type of grenade, and that's pretty much it. It's all skill. Um, it, can be, it can be super competitive and very frustrating, um, but I mean, we've played the, literally the same game, Man, it that is same fun. mode. It is fun. Weeks and weeks without getting tired of it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, like, at first I was skeptical because I thought it would be one-sided, but... Uh, there's not a lot of there's there's not a lot of variables in that in Call of Duty you have like stopping power juggernaut you have like four or five different perk slots with like endless possibilities of per- not in this game it's not like that it's mm-hmm. like you pick this character he gets this gun and this special power right yep. this special perk so I know Gus you haven't you haven't played it yet right? no actually when I was talking about that Christmas like break thing that I went on with my buddy it was a toss up between the new Rainbow Six and Call of Duty like. And Rainbow Six, I hadn't seen that much on it. We did a little bit of research before we ran like to Walmart at like midnight to play it, mm-hmm. or to go buy it. And we're like, let's just stick with Call of Duty. We we'll know what like Call of Duty. It's, it's got zombies. Game. It's got yeah. all these game modes. So I yeah. went, I went safe and got Call of Duty. Even though Siege does sound pretty cool. It, it was fun, and, I'll, and I will admit that right now it's starting to come. I've I've heard on PlayStation that it is like the rage. Like mm-hmm. dudes are like raking in millions of dollars playing professional gaming on there. Not so much on Xbox, but. Um, it's still fun. Like yeah. we'll still get on uh, once or twice a week, and my w- Miranda, uh, she'll be like, "You need to come to bed," and, mm-hmm. I'll, and I'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, one more game," and then all of a sudden it's four thirty in the morning. And I'll be like, "Hey, Clayton, you know you're playing two more yeah, games, you're right?" Like the devil. <laughs> I'm like, "Shut up, Lucifer!" <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I really highly recommend uh, Rainbow Six because I think that it is like only a game that you can play with your friends. It's very tactical. You like have to communicate to win. Yeah, yeah. If you have a group, I mean, I would def- don't play with randoms, or you'll never win. Like yeah. it is that's, so that's probably why I didn't buy it because yeah. not not all my friends. My friends are pretty busy with school and like because I don't have any friends. I don't play. I honestly don't play games with people I actually know in the Marine Corps. And all my friends are civilians and they have jobs and school and different a lot of different schedules. And like I always try, I go to bed early and they stay up late playing video games. So right, I right. play Destiny with them for maybe like two hours. Like. A night sometimes and then I'm like I'm going to bed and then they stay up forever playing well, so that's the great thing about the Marine Corps like yes <laughs> everybody is completely separated and actually in a few months Tyler's gonna be moving back to Arkansas and the one thing that is cool is that uh, online video games keep us communicating like I got buddies in Okinawa Japan that will be playing with dudes in Camp Pendleton. That will be playing with dudes in Camp Lejeune. Yeah, being, being in Oki was like the death of my online gaming with friends. So wait, tell because, me about that. What's, what's because, well, the time difference. Yeah. It, it really got me. Like, it was a very small window, like, on the weekends. Like, say, because Saturday morning would be their Sunday night, mm-hmm. I think. If I'm, if I'm correct. That's Maybe weird. I screwed up. But it's, it's, oh, right, it's along right. those lines, so... Obviously, on the weekends, you're trying to sleep in. So, like, any day I would wake up early, like, I would, like, hit up my friends, see if they were still awake. And so if it's, like, uh, like 8 o'clock in the morning, it's, like, 9 o'clock at night for them. Right. So I can get, like, I can usually squeeze in a few hours before they go to bed at, like, you know, midnight or whatever. So that was it. But I usually always slept in because so I'm a normal person on the weekends. Here's weekend, a so. question for you. for Because a lot of the people listening right now are probably like, <clears throat> okay, that's a lot of video game talk. Would you recommend a new... 
uh, Pooley, a new recruit, a new brand new private or lance corporal coming into the, into the Marine Corps or, or any branch of service, would you recommend investing in an online like console? Are we talking like PlayStation 3, 4, Xbox 360, Xbox One? What would you recommend? Or PC gaming. Hey, or PC a gaming. PC gamer here. <laughs> yeah, dude, I have not gotten into PC gaming, but but uh, I, I feel like I should because there's a lot of talk about it. I've tried. Like, I one, one time, my roommate, he bought a super powerful PC, and he let me, I was like, if you let me play all my Steam games that I've acquired for waiting for myself to get a good PC to play them, mm-hmm. like, I bought Skyrim, like, the Legendary Edition, for 10 bucks. Wow. And I, I discovered mods, and my <laughs> life changed. Right. Like, dude, it's... Mm-hmm. Funny the mods story. for Skyrim, it was a completely different game. It quick looked tangent 10 off times of that, better. though. Uh, when I was, in, I, I was in sixth grade, I was playing PlayStation 3, and there was a game out called Resistance Fall of Man. Dopest game ever, man. It was dope. The premise of the video game was you were a World War II era soldier, and aliens came down from space, and you had to fight them. But I actually learned how to code a website in sixth grade in order to put up <laughs> the glitch videos, like glitching in order to get outside the map, invincibility, invisibility. Like we would spend countless hours on this game trying to find out hacks to the, to the, the developers didn't find. Me and my friends did that with Halo 2, like yeah. try to like jump on top of each other and then like right, jump up and right. then the guy underneath you would like use a sword and then you would hop up to a part of the map exactly. you're not supposed to get to. Yeah, yeah uh, right there were some too. Easter eggs, like in that game especially, it was like uh, outside the map if you went like unbelievably far outside the map you would find like a little teddy bear and a rainbow tree and i guess like the that marked some some symbolism because one of the game developers sons died and his favorite thing was like a little teddy bear it's like out of your mind stuff like no one was ever meant to find this but it was actually out there like you had to walk for a solid like 10 to 20 minutes to go find this teddy bear and a rainbow tree that was an in memorial to the game developers and dead now zone. I'm depressed. <laughs> now I'm <laughs> depressed. <laughs> but I would say to someone um, thinking about getting a console, getting into the Marine Corps, or the military in general, I'd say it depends on where you're at, and it depends on like depends on who you are, really. How I much mean. discipline you have, yeah. because one of the fatal <laughs> flaws like, all of my gaming, gaming requires system, a lot yeah of is uh, <laughs> you rack a discipline. <laughs> yeah, but you you won't see people for weeks at, in the barracks. But that's not a bad thing because you know what it did for me was it deterred me from drinking, from smoking, from chewing. It saved you money? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, well, I was in Hawaii and so when I didn't play games, I was like hiking and at the beach. Well, some of us just aren't that lucky, Tyler. (laughs) Some of us get stationed at the Pentagon. Yeah, you can hike hike here in the summer. You don't want to hike now, though. No, for sure. But, like, that's a good point that video gaming can actually save you money. It can save you from... uh, not, not to say, not to villainize, like, drinking or chewing or Actually smoking. having fun with other real human beings. Right, but I mean, like, it, it is a way, like, when I was a Lance Corporal, you don't make that much money. And I remember uh, before I left uh, my first duty station to my second, I had, like, five or $6,000 in the bank, and that was on, that's not very... And Lance Corporals are known for spending their money on stupid shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, so it's almost a requirement. Testify over there, yeah. <laughs> you know, it is. It's like, when you sign the oath, you say... Uh, I'll I be pledge, irresponsible right, right. with my minuscule paycheck. I pledge allegiance to the yeah. flag. So help me God. <laughs> uh, the copyright of MLB baseball, and <laughs> I will spend all my money on cigarettes and alcohol. Yeah. So, I mean, video gaming is a really good way to, uh, to exactly. save I mean, and it's... I mean, you could, like, as, like, a kid, it's super expensive because you're like, oh, 50 bucks for a game? I'm going to have to save for months. Like, mowing the lawn and stuff. But, like, when you make a decent paycheck, you can buy a game that lasts you till your next paycheck, more than likely, if not longer. Very true. And I don't know if I talked to, the, to you about this the other day or who it was, but <clears throat> it was interesting that I'll spend 5 to $6 on a Java chip frappuccino with two pumps of Toffee Nut and Hazel from Starbucks, but I won't spend $1 on an app that will, like, drastically improve my life. It's true. Isn't that weird? What weird. happens to that? <laughs> <laughs> Was that just an example? Or? <laughs> I was gonna say like Pornhub and app. I don't know, but <clears throat> but really though, like it's true. Like I, it's this weird stigma where I won't spend money <clears throat> on an app, but I'll spend like ridiculous amounts of cash on stupid stuff. I think the same can be equated to video games and online gaming. Like <clears throat> in the grand scheme of things, is four hundred dollars for between a new gaming system and like three games is that really that much money i don't think so yeah i really don't think so for me i don't i don't think it's that much money at all i mean not that we're rich we're definitely not none of us here no, are but rich 
I mean, I, I wouldn't talk to you. Don't, you don't know me. <laughs> I don't know your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I wouldn't be able to keep in contact with some of my best friends if it were if it wasn't for uh, for my Xbox because like who, we just don't call each other on the phone anymore. Text is like only so personal. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, you have the headset on, you can like talk about life and stuff, and kind of just like turn your mind off and like do something as a team and uh, catch up, which is pretty cool. I think that's worth it. Can, right. can, we, can we flip back to what I said about best video gaming online experiences? Yes, Cause... I guess we didn't really finish that, did we? No, well, we, can, mean, we, I, we went I off a tangent. It's, it's... I think ra- my vote is Rainbow. My vote yeah, is well, Rainbow. I, I just want to talk about Gears of War 3. Oh. Just, I want to gush okay. about Gears of right, War 3 real quick. Let's see. Uh, just, I remember just because I was Gears of War 3 came out when I was still in high school, and that was like the pinnacle of my online gaming friend career because it went up hit that and then went downhill and I joined the Marine Corps like I said like kind of <laughs> lost on the downhill yeah <laughs> joined the Marines. like just because I was in Okinawa the time difference screwed me up but back when I was in there I had like a huge group of friends probably around 10 and then like we would make like a team of five on Gears of War and it would like obviously switch out like if this person was offline we mostly always had a full team and just Gears of War if you I've, I don't know if you guys have played the Gears of War 3 multiplayer have you I have but the thing I didn't like about it was that if you had host you no matter what we're gonna slay and I didn't like that and so I stopped playing oh well I I have no idea what you're talking about I just really? like playing with my friends I don't know what that well, means well okay well but, I, I took it like at the time when I played Gears of War which, which Gears of War sorry about that uh, what's that which one I think it was 2 2, two is a lot different because well, I, I never played 2 online really right. but 3 like they they made the multiplayer because the, the thing about Gears of War was like there was usually no, it was no like kind of team deathmatch where you die and respawn. Mm-hmm. What Gears of War 3 did is they gave um, limited lives to the team. So the team would have like 20 lives. And then once those tickets were expired, there'd be five people left on the map. And then when they died, they were out like okay. of the game. That's so it was like you went out there and you killed and died enough to make it look, felt like you were playing something. It wasn't like in Gears of War 2, like you ran out there. Oh, I picked up the sniper rifle and your head explodes and you're out of the game now. Right. This one, like you would do that, die, and you could respawn for like like a 15 minute match. You'd play for like you know 10 minutes. And then by then, like the teams had whittled down to only having like two or, five, two or four people left on the map or whatever. And it was so cool. Like I remember one time I watched some guy, this random guy, by himself take out like he killed him six times because they had one extra ticket, life ticket, and then he had to take out five of them by himself. And he did it. And I was watching it on like the viewing thing. Clutch. It was. It was. I sent him a message afterward. I was like, <laughs> "Dude, you rock!" Like yeah. on Xbox. But That's yeah, it was nice. like that. It kind of like had that like because he had to use teamwork like towards the end because like you couldn't just run out there willy nilly. Right. And like everyone was always alive because like it got to a point where it was like two people left and it's like oh like. Buddy, come with me. Like we need to like watch each other's backs. They have like five people left. So it's more take tactical. When they, when Towards it the end, yeah, because right. like, you could still have fun and like kind of like experiment. You wouldn't have to like be so cautious. You could like run out there with reckless abandon gotcha. out of, to a point, and then it would stop. And, and then it's like it he's like, you need to slow down. Like you, right. it's like this is like you're watching your buddy run around for the next five minutes if you die. So you're at Gears of War three. I'm at Rainbow Six Siege. Yes, Tyler. What are you at for best multiplayer experience? With friends, right? Yes, that's what I was talking about. With like with, with the friends. Okay. I'm like a very like in the moment type person, so it's usually like what what am I into right now? And I gotta say, I've never sinked more hours into a game this quickly than I have Ark. Ark. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Like we all log on at the same time. We're all harvesting resources to build like whatever it is we're building. Right. Like get our defenses up. We're like going to try and tame like these giant dinosaurs together i don't know it's, it's ak-47 uh, is a dinosaur that's two yeah. things i've heard Dude, about this you know game. What? i love it but here's the thing so we <laughs> all have vastly different opinions on which is the best multiplayer game but they're all equally like i would go out right now and be interested in buying gears and buying arc yeah because... well we need some more tribe members in arc because we're our tribes already getting like we have so much stuff that we don't even have enough people to manage it right now let's create a movement Let's get this podcast to create yeah. a movement, recruit. There, there's yeah, the name of our you, podcast. Seriously, like, add me on Xbox. I need more tribe members for my art. I, can this just be a shameless plug for our awesome. tribe members? Yes. Is that, does that mean that I have a problem? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I like that. I really like that topic. Well, uh, to, not to be lame in the segue here, but we're going to get off of uh, video games uh, 40 minutes into the podcast. And, and talk about... God. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make them really comfortable. How would you like to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Yeah. Um, so this is really random. And I looked at my Time Hop app on Facebook the other day. And oh, I God. like, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I hate that app because sometimes I'm like, 
It's, that's always how oh, I man, feel. It's look like, at, look, I looked like that. I got up to 12 wines of cocaine that <laughs> night. Well, that, was, that was something. So I looked at the app, and this is exactly a year ago to the date. Um, to uh, today? Like right well, now? Well, not today, actually. Oh, okay. Yesterday. So, well, that's not current. That's not news anymore. R- well, it's not news, but it's so interesting because I never <laughs> heard of this, man. Only one popular news source really reported on this topic, and that is Kurt Bush's ex-girlfriend is an assassin. Kurt Busch, if you don't know, is a very popular NASCAR driver. Have you guys heard of this? I've heard of it. So his I wife fights Templars. It just seemed For ridiculous <laughs> to me. So I was like, I'm okay, not reading so this. So we're going to dissect this. If you guys are okay, so, podcast. Well, here's what I'll do. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll I mean, run, you need to explain I'll that a little bit more. I'll put some context here. I'll run down through the facts, and I'll let you guys decide <laughs> here and at home, is it a truth or is it a lie? I'll also remind you <clears throat> that these are transcripts in the court of law. The special Victims Unit. Not really, but under <laughs> under <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So, all right. So, let me run down through it for you real quick. <clears throat> all right. So, Kurt Busch uh, testified in court that his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend, is, and I quote... You mean they're not together anymore? They're not together anymore. And, oh, and here, the, actually, the, the court case is that I believe she was filing a straining order against him, and in return, I think he was also filing a straining order against her. So it just seems like it's you know it's, a duplication of effort, it, right? But well, using assassins, well, you can take them out from different zip code, probably. So. It sounds ridiculous. What's that restraining order going to do? Ridiculous. But let me run through it for you guys real quick. So I'm quoting him right here. This is okay, Kurt Busch, uh, famous NASCAR driver, and I quote: "She is a trained assassin dispatched on covert missions around the world, including Central America, South America, and Africa." One time in El Paso, Texas, she left in camouflage and boots, only returned to the hotel wearing a trench coat, and underneath, lingerie with blood and other matter all over her. The other matter being brains, semen, semen, Probably. whatever. <laughs> I, listen, I don't want Kurt Busch knocking on my door or her girlfriend. Glitter, <laughs> lotion, <laughs> some type matter. of skincare product. God, you guys are so. And this sick. is testified in the court of law, so I'll continue. Not only did Kurt Busch testify, but others also came on, behalf, on his behalf to testify in court that uh, she, his ex-girlfriend would constantly brag that she was an assassin. And Bush was also quoted saying, quote, I know she could take me down at any time. She is a badass, unquote. Let's hear it. What do you guys think? All right. I feel <laughs> like the most ridiculous I thing feel like I've based on heard. what he said... I could troll someone to in, in the blue. I mean, if I really had the time. And I mean, there are some crazy women out there, right? Yeah, there are some absolutely. crazy women who oh, will no, go absolutely. to any length to secure you for as long as possible. No, I agree. Um, and I think that, you know, if Kurt I, Bush probably makes some money too. So exactly. That's, that's exactly. To you know what? Around. If I was dating Kurt Bush and maybe, you know, I was in a tight spot, I'd be like, you know, I know what I could do to keep this guy. I'm going to just terrify the balls off this dude. But here's the thing. And my, okay, so initially when I read this story, I said, okay, that's a lie. There's no way. But first off, what kind of wheelbarrow size ball sack do you have to have to lie in the court of law to a judge under oath that Well, he probably believes it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, he right. probably well, thinks so that. You, so your, your take on it is that she's faking being in sassy. Yeah. But showed the signs of being in a sense. Right? I mean, I could get a trench coat. I could get some lingerie. <laughs> but what about the blood and brains and other matter? And the other, oh, I could produce the other, ma- other matter, too. So you think that she would go through that much trouble to splatter herself? I have to be in the shower, though. That's the only way I produce other matter. Oh, well, you know. Me, I prefer socks, but... <laughs> 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 so, guys, what do you think? What, what's going I, on? I'm here? trying to process all of that. Because that was a lot to take in. No, I agree. Just because, like... We're, that's a really weird topic, Kurt. Some dude, like his girlfriend, is Not an just assassin. Some dude, he's a like, NASCAR right. driver. He's got a lot of money and a, lot, and a reputation. Why would he lie? That's what I'm saying. Why would he lie? He I'm would. just thinking, like, do assassins even exist? Because like, I, I, I maybe think it's just Assassin's Creed and like all these like orders, like these cults yeah. and like weird things happening behind the scenes. And I'm like, it doesn't happen. Well, there's the real world. There are definitely in. secret undercover agents that get found out every year. And for are, sure, yeah, and but are, I feel like they are assassinated well, by the, by the capturing organization or government. Not yeah, to get I, too I understand far like that, that hole, kind of stuff. But that's Benghazi in a nutshell. And and if I mean, I don't want to be the well, guy well, the, with the way she described it. I've, I, I'm picturing like. The video game Hitman, like mm-hmm. where it's like some bald dude with a barcode. Right. That's what I picture this girl is. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like she has like some. I feel like she has heightened abilities or something. Like, 
she's like sitting having like a picnic and then like a sniper like shoots through the window she like can deflect it with a plate or something <laughs> yeah. and then like she does like cartwheel like, that's what i'm picturing when i said like if someone were to tell me my girlfriend's an assassin like that's, maybe that's for whatever reason for maybe not it's playing video games and stuff. but that's a, okay yeah right but here's the thing that news article i would not believe that if that came from like the new york compost or the sun oh yeah what was the source npr NPR came out with that a year ago, and no other popular <laughs> news site picked up one of the best NASCAR. Not that I'm like a NASCAR fan; I don't give a shit about NASCAR. But All right, <laughs> easy man. I'm violent about it's it. It's okay if you don't I like hate it. NASCAR. <laughs> but the fact that like Kurt Busch came out and was like, "She's an assassin. <laughs> she has she has traveled throughout Central South America and other continents to kill." other people in the court of law and by the way this wasn't like some huge like monumental court case this is like family court like small claims court like dude hit my car he's dude. an assassin he was on his way to a job <laughs> i would i want all of his assassin money <laughs> yeah. to pay for it yeah because he's definitely making bank i don't know i would just hire a private investigator honestly just and then if, and if he turned up missing you know like yeah, obviously she would <laughs> she would kill him but here's the thing if the investigator is worth his salt what if she... Well, you don't tell him. Well, I don't know, You're man. just like, hey, man, that's my wife's being a little strange. I want you to follow her around. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. That's like sending a chicken to slaughter. I feel like I don't want to tell... Dude, he's a private investigator. That title yeah, that's what he holds signed a little bit for. of weight. <laughs> I'll investigate your privates. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, real quick, we'll go around the table. We're, we're reaching, I think, a, at least a half an hour. I'm not sure. Um, what other on. topics you guys got on, on Yeah, I got like... Hand? We're probably at like 35 minutes right I now. I recently... Right. Um, well, as you can see... Oh, actually... Go ahead. Um... Apparently, the kid that played Anakin Skywalker in The Phantom Menace uh-huh. died. He was like 26. He played the little annoying Anakin from episode one. Right. And apparently that was he the died. Worst. I, I just recently watched and you all just, of And you just said his acting performance was the worst, and he's dead now. How's yeah, that's, yeah, it's a weird Wait, thing to follow up with the death. <laughs> uh, sorry, buddy. Uh, <laughs> what did he die of, though? I, I honestly, I don't even think it's true, because I found it, like, just with the buzz of Star Wars especially now I feel like this article would have been more places but you know how you click an article on Facebook and then it'll drop down with a few other related articles right like it was one of those drop down related articles I would be interested it wasn't to see and then the source. The, I forget what the source was it didn't look credible like at first glance right. and I didn't care much to do any other research <laughs> yeah. this it just is was real like news. A, <laughs> org slash Thailand it's like who's yeah. that one comedian uh, uh, John Mulaney who's like talking about how like the Washington Post is like uh, the tears of of uh, bad people in the in the eyes of the post, it's like if you're a child but you're undead, you're an angel. Or no, if you're a child and you're dead, you're an angel. <laughs> but if you're a child and you're undead, uh, you're like, destroying America, probably. Yeah. <laughs> can you hear this? What's that? Wait, can you return this? Yeah, one? I can hear that. Turn you off. Yeah, I hope everybody at home can hear you turn that off. Yeah, I can hear it. It's like real quick. It's like. Okay. Man, this whole podcast thing. It's pretty, I'm already two beers down. I'm like clutching this like it's a sippy cup. Yeah, well, I'm like <laughs> trying to... I, you can't really ring glass, but if you could, I would get all of the beer out of this bottle. Yeah, no, um, for sure. I I'm going to politely try to finish this beer I'm not a huge fan of. <laughs> well, hey, so, so if, if, you, if you're not done with it, I mean, I'll, go, I'll I mean, go ahead, because like, yeah, I don't really like it. Go that well, steal that to, from to let you guys know at home right now, I've drank one Yingling traditional lager. Uh, and right now, myself and Tyler are both drinking Southern Tier chocolate beer to let yeah. you know what's going on right now uh i want to talk about facial hair let's talk about facial hair real quick we got you know we got a solid 10 minutes let's, let's finish up with some facial hair right facial now. hair all right yeah and the, did we did we finish off, what was that the one you were that i interrupted? yeah yeah okay so we're we're done with kid anakin we're, yeah we're totally done with i want to say yeah, you know i want to do i do want to close did. that with uh you know how <laughs> may how, the force be with him yeah that and also <laughs> You only have so much acting experience at that age, so I, br- I blame whoever directed that movie and told oh, yeah. him to like go over like, the top with his lines that's, like that. that we'll, we'll save that for another episode. I'm a, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I yeah. could probably we'll, do my own we'll podcast. We'll save that for another. I have a confession that's, to make. I have you, a confession. You've never seen Star Wars. I've never seen I've seen, every, I've seen like the last Star Wars. And episode I thought seven? it was meh. Like, okay, so... Right. Public execution. <laughs> yeah. Get on your knees. So ne- next episode will be... Star Wars, more oriented. I didn't. I didn't want to. I did like all of my well, topics were going to be Star Wars, so I didn't want to no talk about podcast. it that much. There, well, there's no other podcast out there that's talking about Star Wars. Yeah, we should have done it. No other yeah, podcast no, is doing no it. Like this is one. an open market. We should have. We messed up. <laughs> we messed up. So moving on, facial hair and, the, and not, not only. Okay, so. 
facial hair in general. Mm -hmm. I'm a civilian now, so obviously, if you can't see at home, just imagine a luscious, uh, smooth, silky beard donning my face right now. Yeah, like a short, well-kept beard. Like a short, well-kept beard. Like it says, like... I'm this way because I'm professional, but I can bust out at any moment. Right. Yeah, you like know. you still look like you can go party. Yeah. It right. says, like, I'm a professional, but I can get naughty. Yeah. <laughs> but I won't be in a few days if you want. Exactly. So right now I'm rocking the full beard. Now, nothing crazy. Very trim. Very professional. Tyler, what are you rocking right now? This is supposed to be a mustache. Now, it's been about... This is like week seven, and uh, this this is week seven over here. <laughs> cut, cut to me having no facial hair. Cut to a, <laughs> cut to a baby's bottom. If you're yeah, exactly head, <laughs> just smooth as a baby's bottom. Yeah, you kind of look like a like a baby's bottom right now. It's good though; it works for you. I can't imagine they, you with a full beard. I wish you could grow a full beard. Go back, go back to you. Finish your mustache okay, thing because so I interrupted. So yeah, so about me. so from like week one through four, it was just uh, not really constant ridicule. I would say there would just be people that come up to me and be like, "Oh, are you trying to grow a mustache?" Like, yeah, I don't like it. You know, just like straight <laughs> up. And it was like, okay, well, uh, you know, their self esteem is gone for the day. I'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> But, you know, I would all, I had some jokes that I'd throw out there, and it's like, oh, no, it's not a mustache. You know, I drank a glass of chocolate milk this morning. I forgot to wipe it off or whatever. Try and get myself first. That way it wouldn't hurt as bad. Um, but it, and this is week seven now, and I, I think it's, you know, what do you guys, it's, you can actually tell that it exists. You know? I like, no, I dig it. It's, to be honest, I com- it the only like thing that I would say now. is <clears throat> the mustache, you tote the line between a pedophile and a classy gentleman. And I yeah. think the thing like that... Like Burt Reynolds. Hold yes, on. like Burt Reynolds. Famous and, pedophile. Yes. Right? Or am I wrong? I'm well, no, you're wrong. right. But here, here's stories. the thing, though. I hope you... Co- yeah, there you go. You can... There's a, there's a couple you different mustaches. You can curl mustache it. I can. That's you impressive. Can curl My entire things. opinion just changed. Yeah. You well, have to make sure that you keep it well trimmed along the, the pot, top of the lip. Now, there are... finale. Now, here's the thing. All right. There are grooming centers in the Marine Corps. Oh, hold on. Right? The grooming standards in the marine. Oh, if for all you, okay, y'all hear this? Oh, that thud right there. Yeah, what is that? A, talk? This is a fisticuff stronghold bourbon wax. It's a gentleman's blend. Okay. Um, it is a mustache wax, and this is also my uh, Kent handmade handmade saw cut mustache comb. Okay, so if you want to join the Marine Corps and you want to have a, okay, so say you're a brand new private and you're at MOS school, how hard is it going to be, in your opinion, to get a mustache? Or to maintain a mustache without some staff sergeant being like, hey. Well, like where I work, no one really cares. Um, And I've kind of been like just slightly out of regs lately so I can let it grow and thicken up. Right. And uh, I've gotten away with it pretty well. Um, But I would say like if you're at a big base or in the real Marine Corps, as people like to say, um, which depending on where you are, like the the real Marine Corps is never going to exist. It's always going to be where you aren't. Um, So just be prepared for that. Constantly Um, chasing it. But yeah, you're constantly chasing it. Until you're literally in Fallujah, like probably getting (laughs) mortared, like then it exists, but no other time. Um, Yeah, I would say if I was on base or something, people would always be like, I don't know, criticizing it and telling me to like trim little hairs and whatnot. So you have to like, I mean, facial hair in the Marine Corps requires a lot of maintenance, but I'm in a kind of a joint command. And um, everyone that I work with, I kind of know personally, so it's it's a pretty chill environment to try and grow a mustache for me. What about you, Gus? What do you think? What what's the question? What so, do I think about facial hair? Like, yeah. I wish I could grow facial hair. What's your hair. take? Okay, so you can't grow facial Not hair. Not effectively. I grow enough to make it like if I let it grow out for like a few days, like I'll look like an adult. Okay. But after like a week. It just, like, it doesn't get thicker. It gets longer. Right. So it looks really pathetic. Do you get patchy? Is that... I, I don't get patchy. It's just, like, it's usually just, like, right here, like, on my cheeks. And then, but I get a neck beard. Oh, Which okay. is disgusting. Oh, nice. the neck beard. So, I like, I mean, it. I do, like, so if I were to shave, like, once a week, yeah. I would have, like, I'd look rugged, I guess. Okay. Mm. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not that great. Like, I don't know. Ladies like a beard. Yeah. Everyone says that. So Everyone likes facial hair. Up. No, it's dope. I really do like it. And I think that... There, are, there are a lot of li- oh, there you go. Especially if you curl Damn. the sides, you're <laughs> yeah. totally gonna get called out on that if you yeah. are at a Marine yeah, Corps Yeah, no, base. I could not wear this outside of this house. Right, <laughs> but I mean, when I was in the Marine Corps and I was a corporal at the time, I think I grew up my my mustache, and I was at a New Year's Eve party on leave, and I think I fell asleep and they shaved a Hitler mustache out of it. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. So. 
I mean, I, I was I was <laughs> I was rocking the Hitler mustache for like a solid week until like, you did. I, you actually went to work with yeah, it. Yeah, no, I wore it. I wore that around with pride. I mean, that's kind of not, not that's pride in right? Hitler, but it's within race. It's very much so within race. Yeah. They and prefer the, it. Yeah, they prefer it. In fact, and in the Air Force, there are regulations also, of course. But uh, a lot of people I've seen, they're even more strict with facial hair than the Marine Corps in that you have to have a almost Hitler esque facial hairline going with your so mustache. So if you if you want to know the reg, it's um, your mustache has to fall in line between the imaginary lines that um, go up your face vertically, starting at the corners of your mouth. So basically, it can be no wider than the corners of your mouth. Right. What if you have a really wide mouth? Like yeah, like then, wide then you can mouth rock mask. like a Tom Selleck, like nobody's <laughs> business. Cool. Right on. Well, I feel like we covered a lot. Uh, we covered video games, how video games keep you connected in the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. Assassins, NASCAR assassins. Yeah. We covered that. And USMC facial hair. Yep. And child actors dying <clears throat> well yeah he was only 26 too well, kind of... well in the eyes of the post that's a that's an angel in the of Washington Post well a dead he, he, he's he 26 when he died he was though. an adult when he died yeah, yeah, he, so was, he, he was, was a child. obviously no one gives a shit oh yeah <laughs> he can go to hell don't care about him yeah uh, but yeah so guy. moving forward we'll uh, we'll decide on, on a name soon um, the beginning episodes here will be hosted uh, at least on my YouTube uh, you might be able to find them elsewhere Read the description below to find our gamer tags, and uh, we'll also mark off a couple of key points along the timeline there if you want to skip ahead. And uh, yeah, yeah. We, were, we were all over the place. We were all over. You know what? I that's that's how podcasts work. Like I, I always that, like though. I always listen to podcasts, and I'm like, oh great, I'm gonna hear like <laughs> uh, their top favorite movies of 2015, and then it's just <laughs> number never, one, it, number two, you just yeah. go right through right. it. Right. No, it I never it never does that. It always goes like they always just like talk about going to the movies like oh yeah i went to the movies and like some kid dropped popcorn and i was like i want to know if inside out was your favorite animated exactly. movie well, that's the thing <laughs> I, I feel like i don't want to label this podcast like we were talking like what is the focus i don't want to focus it on anything yes there's going to be marine corps ties and military ties but we're people too and i think it's really great to explore what we do in our free time so we're going to leave it at that and keep it wide open uh in the meantime uh send us your cool stuff uh, whether it be your favorite video games, movies, stories, photos, because we're very creative people here. We enjoy photography, videography, any cool shorts you find on the internet, and uh, any interesting pop culture stuff that comes across your radar. Go ahead and send it in to us. And, uh, I'm Tyler we'll Main, and insert awesome sign-off tagline that is yet to be determined. Right there. All right. All right. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you later. See ya. We love you. Goodbye.